There are so many people who watch the news and sit in their seats and think to themselves, what do I do? How can I help? How can I support? And I'm excited to see the center um, continue to be a beacon of hope and change so that people will understand how to connect with our resources and how to um, be courageous. One of the things I've seen through the work of the center is giving people, giving me, the practical skills about what it looks like to love my neighbor. Not just the way that I think I should, the way that is a good intention, but the way that has a positive impact. Whether it's as a trainer in the racial healing, healing workshops, or whether it's as a member of the Bishop's Board of Advisors, it is such a healing experience. I think it has made my baptismal covenant and seeking and serving Christ and all people, striving for justice and peace, kind of my North Star. We're all children of God. We're called to love each other. And if we spread just a little bit of that love to each other, we can heal this racial divide. We need to stop to normalize racism. We kind of have that idea that, oh, we just don't like that person, that color, that race, that religion. But to really understand how, how racism has formed our country and how it has uh, how it's formed our country and how the damn job will even say to our country. And then now understanding that there are people who are really trying to make a difference and that I know better how to make a difference and have conversations about racism. It is important that we start out telling them this isn't about shame or blame. This is about growing. We invite them to be, as Catherine says, just one shade braver. And witnessing people take that invitation seriously. And until we can begin to understand and appreciate each person as a human being and a brother and a sister of ourselves, our neighbor, the work must continue. The truth telling must continue. The training must continue. We have brought people to this point now where they are anxious for this work, they're anxious to learn more. Now, what we can, can we do to take that up to another level where they are, as Catherine would say, brave enough to go out in the world now and take what they have learned, take how they have changed their own perspective and share that with their communities, their work colleagues, wherever they go, that they have found not only the courage, but they have found the dialogue they need. That it is crucial so that we can truly have healthy relationships with other people. Relationships that are loving, empathetic, and without resentments, free relationships. In some ways, it's been an evangelism tool because in our cultural moment right now, we're trying not to talk about those things. <laughs> and. It actually is liberating for many people when a church is willing to talk about those issues and to bring them to the fore, seeing diversity, seeing difference, and yet recognizing that that is a beautiful intentionality that God has put in the world. The crux of this is that we are getting more people involved and helping them to understand how to dismantle racism. The flower continues to bloom.